Good day to you, my dear brothers and sisters. I welcome you all to this moment with Jesus, the Word of God. Today is September 7, Monday of the 23rd week in Ordinary Time. Halina po kayo at uh, samahan ako sa ating pakikinig at pagninilay sa salita ng Diyos. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, it is widely reported that there is immorality among you, an immorality of a kind not found even among pagans, a man living with his father's wife. And you are inflated with pride. Should you not rather have been sorrowful? The one who did this deed should be expelled from your midst. I, for my part, although absent in body but present in spirit, have already as if present pronounced judgment on the one who has committed this deed in the name of our Lord Jesus. When you have gathered together and I am with you in spirit with the power of the Lord Jesus, you are to deliver this man to Satan for the destruction of his flesh, so that his spirit may be saved on the day of the Lord. Your boasting is not appropriate. Do you not know that a little yeast leavens all the dough? Clear out the old yeast, so that you may become a fresh batch of dough, inasmuch as you are unleavened. For our Paschal Lamb, Christ, has been sacrificed, Therefore, let us celebrate the feast, not with the old yeast, the yeast of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. The Word of the Lord. Psalm 5 Lead me in your justice, Lord. For you, O Lord, delight not in wickedness. No evil man remains with you. The arrogant may not stand in your sight. You hate all evildoers. Lead me in your justice, Lord. You destroy all who speak falsehood. The bloodthirsty and the deceitful, the Lord abhors. Lead me in your justice, Lord. But let all who take refuge in you be glad and exalt forever. Protect them that you may be the joy of those who love your name. Lead me in your justice, Lord. Gospel Antiphon My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them, and they follow me. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. On a certain Sabbath, Jesus went into the synagogue and taught, and there was a man there, whose right hand was withered. The scribes and the Pharisees watched him closely to see if he would cure on the Sabbath so that they might discover a reason to accuse him. But he realized their intentions and said to the man with the withered hand, Come up and stand before us. And he rose and stood there. Then Jesus said to them, I ask you, is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath rather than to do evil, to save life rather than to destroy it? Looking around them all, he then said to him, Stretch out your hand. He did so, and his hand was restored. But they became enraged and discussed together what they might do with Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We find in today's Gospel two perspectives or two points of view, or we might even say two attitudes. No? The legality of the scribes and the Pharisees and the restoration of the whole body and the perspective of Jesus. Two different perspectives, no? The scribes and the Pharisees are so legalistic as regards the Sabbath. And Jesus, naman, on the other hand, saw the need of that person with, who is sick with a withered hand. And he wanted to restore the person. 
Yesterday, we were talking about community and we should do everything to bring a person back to God and to bring the person back to the community. No, A person who errs, a person who sins, we should do all. We should never give up. No, Yesterday's uh, gospel reading, Jesus presented steps on how we can restore a, a, a person erring, even sin, sinning against us, how we can restore them to the community and to the life uh, in Christ. No, And uh, you see, Sin was the case from yesterday's gospel. The sin is the one that separates us from one another. There's still another thing that separates us physically from one another. And these are the illnesses. These are the physical sicknesses, as in the case of the withered man. Um, of course, people in the hospitals or at home in their, in their beds, uh, they are separated from the brothers and sisters, at least physically. No? And... Um, with the intention of Jesus to always bring people together, he really wanted that. He wanted the restoration of, of the person or the healing of the person. And more so during the time of Jesus, the sick people are considered impure. Ito na naman because of, of the laws, no? And impure people should not mix with the pure ones. Otherwise, the pure ones will also be, they will become impure also. Mahahawahan, no? Of the impurity, you know? look at that. Look at the way uh, the, the, the they think, especially during those days. And, and that is the reason why, for example, the the um, those sick with leprosy, you no, know, the lepers, they cannot mix with the healthy. They have to live outside the, the city, so to speak. Otherwise, their presence among the healthy would make um, the healthy people or the pure people impure. And so that's once again a very beautiful exp um, picture of how people are separated from one another. But again, as I've said, Jesus has always um, uh, in mind and the tendency to put people together in communities that nothing should be separate us from our brothers and sisters. No? And he is now given this problem um, as he was talking in the synagogue, as we have heard. And then a man with a withered hand, naninigas yung kamay, was standing there. And um, he, he called the man to, to come to, to him. No? Of course, with this uh, intention, once again, of restoration. But the scribes and Pharisees were watching him, trying to, to, to catch him at, on the very act of violating the Sabbath, violating the law. No? And Jesus, on the other hand, kumbaga, at this point in time, what his intention is much higher than the law. And that is the restoration of the whole person. And so, again, uh, as the story goes, he cured the person with a withered hand. Again, with the intention that this person might be integrated once again into the community and, and that he will be a member of the community. No? That's important to Jesus. We are one body. The different parts should be connected to one another. So, yun, sicknesses and sin, <laughs> Since these are the ones that separate us from one another. And Jesus has always the intention of, of um, putting the people together. And that should also be our intention, being his body, the church. We should be connected to one another. So the question is, are we really doing this? Are we, are we um, instruments of Jesus for reconciliation and peace so that we will be uh, really together with one another despite the sins that are happening, despite the sicknesses that are occurring to our brothers and sisters? Kaya nga, visiting the sick is also one of the seven corporal works of mercy. Bisitahin mo yung may sakit. Hindi siya makalapit sa iyo, ikaw ang lumapit sa kanya so that the connectedness will not be disrupted. So, yun po, yun ang gusto ng Panginoon. Lagi tayong magkakasama sa kasalanan man ay hindi dapat naghihiwalay sa atin, sa mga may sakit man ay hindi din dapat nahihiwalay sa atin. We should be acting as one body, of Christ, the church, one community, loving and sharing love with one another. Panalangin ng bayan. Para sa ating mga Kristiyano, wala nang higit pang batas o utos, kundi ang ipinag-uutos ng Ebanghelyo na hamalin ang Diyos at ang kapwa. Pahalagahan natin ang paniniwalang ito habang nananalangin tayo para sa pangailangan ng bawat miyembro ng ating sambahyanan at ng ating simbahan. Gawin mo kaming tagapagdulot ng buhay o Panginoon. Ang simbahan, naway palaging maging bago at dalisay sa pamamagitan ng mga salita ng Ebanghelo ni Kristo 
manalangin tayo. Gawin mo kaming tagapagdulot ng buhay o Panginoon. Ang mga nasa tungkulin sa gobyerno, naway magabayan ng karunungan kapag gumawa sila ng panukala at magpasya sa mga pinahahalagahang mga proyekto. Manalangin tayo. Gawin mo kaming tagapagdulot ng buhay o Panginoon. Ang ating pagsamba naway maging salamin ng ating katapatan at dedikasyon sa mapagpakumbabang paglilingkod natin sa Diyos at sa kapwa. Manalangin tayo. Gawin mo kaming tagapagdulot ng buhay o Panginoon. Sa mga may sakit at sa pinaghihinaan ng loob, naway makapagdulot tayo ng pag-asa at kaginhawahan. Manalangin tayo. Gawin mo kaming tagapagdulot ng buhay o Panginoon. Ang mga yumao, naway mamayapa sa piling ng Diyos. Manalangin tayo. Gawin mo kaming tagapagdulot ng buhay o Panginoon. Sa katahimikan ng ating puso, ipanalangin natin ang ating mga pansariling kahilingan at mga kahilingan ng mga taong pinangakuha natin na ating ipagdadasal. Ama naming nasa langit, sinusuri mo ang aming mga puso at hindi lihim sa iyo ang pinakatago naming kaisipan. Liwanagan mo ang aming mga puso para sa higit na tunay na pagsamba at ang aming mga kamay para sa higit na bukas loob na paglilingkod sa kapwa. Hinihiling namin ito sa pamamagitan ni Kristo ang aming Panginoon. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, holy be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Maraming salamat po sa inyo sa inyong pakikiisa sa ating uh, pagninila ngayong araw na ito. Alam nyo, naiwan ko po yung stand ng camera sa simbahan kahapon dahil nag-live streaming tayo ng misa. Kaya nandito ako ngayon sa aking kusina. <laughs> At uh, ito, ganito lamang ang ating uh, naging presentation. So, isang magandang buong linggo po sa inyo lahat. Magandang araw at magandang buhay. This is Father Ron Sandoval, live streaming from Vienna, Austria. Ciao!